Hello, guys. It's going good. Yeah, you've been having a good week? Yeah. Some fun stuff here. Yeah. Yeah, actually, so good. I'm not even trading today. <laughs> That's how you know. Yeah. When you when you can afford to stay away from those uh, those crazy Fridays. Well, the thing is, is all all my plays already did what I wanted them to do, and I just don't like the risk reward up here. Yeah, that's pretty fair. Uh, you know, do you are are you basically seeing like? Because I, I think a lot of people are looking at this as potentially just you know the short term bounce before we do come back down a little bit. So, are you trying to you know avoid that floor falling? Yeah, so we have, like, outside weeks across the board, which that's always my target, is to become an outside week, and so many names are outside weeks now, and most of these moves have just come straight off the lows, so in the very short term, we're super extended, so I want a pullback, um, a daily higher low to form, before trying to get back in into any long positions. Especially yeah, but... especially like ES and NQ or SPY and QQQ, everything's pretty much straight off the bottom. And we've just had consecutive days of higher lows every single day. So we're at like, what, day four now of straight up? So that's why I'm just not even trading. Like, this does not meet my setup requirement and i am more than happy to set out yeah that's that's definitely fair no need to push the button i'm definitely going to come back to you in a second to talk more about these outside weeks but first I want to say hi to sim as well how's it going hey good morning wolf good morning ladies um doing well um pretty crazy day or pretty pretty crazy morning um just like you played tesla right at the open Saw a nice bounce level around that 870 zone. Um, I was able to take that for some decent profit. Unfortunately, had some lag, though, on my platform. And, you know, was trying to fill 20 contracts for the 900 calls for next week's expiration. Uh, only filled me for two. So that kind of sucked. But um, well, so whatever. I know, man. <laughs> profit is profit, though, right? I can't. Um, I really can't complain, uh, especially on quad witching day, which is today. Um also took some SPX in the morning as well. Took UPS yesterday for puts. That printed pretty nicely. Other than that, honestly, just been sitting back and kind of observing. I mean, uh, uh, on a day like this, um, I just I, I kind of just want to wait for a good amount of volume. Uh, volume for me right now is a little bit low. I'm just kind of chilling, sitting back, seeing what we do at this level. Um, SPY was pretty nice. Saw it go from red to green. Same with the Qs. Um, tech's been looking really good. Uh, I was looking at a firm today, which is pretty nice. Made a decent recovery. I want to see if we break above that 40 level and, and hold. Might take some uh, calls to swing for that, but that's about it. Love it. So, yeah, uh, I know we typically end up trading, you know, some SPX, some SPY, uh, different things like that in these spaces. So if you do take anything, just keep us in the loop on that for sure. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Any initial inclination right here? So, I mean, uh, I'm mostly looking at SPY. Uh, and right now, you know, it's not up that much on the day, to be honest, even with tech running. Um, You know, I want to see some good continuation of if uh, for some upside above 441.6, of technically 441.7. Um, I mean, we're getting some volume coming in right now, um, as you can see. So we got a nice, a decent green candle on it. But... You know, again, I just kind of want to wait for, for a clear direction. Um, anytime it's quad witching, I, I like to take a step back. I do uh, typically downsize on days like this just because of the volatility and the choppy price action. Okay. Yeah. Sarah, I also saw you posted about quad witching. Um, do you want to give, you know, any, any thoughts on that to the audience, people that aren't familiar with it and just how you typically will trade around it? Yeah, so um, quad witching is essentially um, there's there's four types of um, expirations that, that land on the same day. So this this happens four times a year, and it happens every third month of the year on every third Friday of that month. Um, so 
what it is is it's basically going to be um it's going to be in March, June, September and December, I believe. Um, so what it does is what, what happens on that day is there's an expiration of the, the index features, um, which also includes the index options, stock options, and then single stock features. They all expire on that particular day. So some of these, um, I guess, portfolio managers, you could say what they want, what they'll tend to do on days on these particular days is either they'll roll out their contracts um, if they're holding anything um, or they're just really recategorizing their portfolios. And while they're doing so, you notice a, uh, a big amount of buying and selling. You see that heavy volatility come in. I don't really see that come in um, uh, in the morning. It's usually during the last hour of the trading session. So expect that volatility then. Till then, I just like to, you know, I'd like to trade the open and then really just sit cash until I see some clear direction um, towards that last hour. Appreciate the explanation there. Okay, I see Vegas and Mel are both up here. I dropped you both co-host invites if you want to check those out. Vegas, what's going on? Hi, good morning. Uh, fabulous day, actually. Loving the loving the quad witch and uh, had some really great trades uh, this morning. And currently, uh, lotto-wise, um, Apple has 165 calls. Um, currently, they're at $0.04, cents, so super risk-reward here on those um unfortunately like i before we had the spaces i was already in them from two cents but um so definitely there's good risk reward there still on apple and also i had a dark pool confirmation as well that apple was bullish over 162 from the money flow from last week looking for this to go towards on a swing level for expiring april 167.50 is the longer term target for swing traders and uh really uh, super impressed with BABA, and that was another dark pool confirmation. Uh, mentioned yesterday on my feed that if it broke 103.50, there could be some serious fireworks on BABA, and we've seen nothing but fireworks on BABA. So those are kind of my like the ones I'm focused on um, for today. And AMD, I'm looking, I'm uh, in AMD as well, and I am in AMD Lottos 115s. Expired today, I paid 50 cents. They're currently around 57. So those are my trades that I'm in right now. Very nice. I saw you posted about PLTR this morning. Yes. <laughs> I was having a good day. So I was like, wow, my my trade's going. So that's looking good too. Yes. Yeah, a nice run up. So we had that initial run this morning for about 30, 40 minutes, the fall back down. And now it seems to be uh, gapping up again, not just with PLTR, but you know, with a lot of tech right here. Uh, what's your thoughts on, you know, coming out of three now consecutive days of green, really for tech? Uh, I don't think any of us like to call bottoms or anything like that. Just do you feel like we're getting any decent setups? Well, you know, I'm going to be watching actually in particular Microsoft. If we can close, uh, you know, to the upside on Microsoft, then I think that, um, you know, we should maybe have some continuation next week. Um, however, uh, you know, if Microsoft does not, if it closes on a, a bearish level, you know, then I'm going to anticipate some potential weakness next week. So I'm really going to be watching actually how Microsoft closes the day. And that will help give me um, some sentiment into next week. So I want to see Microsoft close strong. If it closes a little uh, on the weak side, um, then I think we could see some volatility, you know, some some pullbacks next week if it closes weak. But if it closes actually pretty strong, I think we could have some potential nice continuations. Uh, you know, right now I'm just trading, um, you know, day to day. Um, not, you know, I have some swings like Apple swing right now, but I'm not, you know, super heavy still until I really feel that, okay, we have a full direction um, and you can, you can go obviously heavier. I think there's still, uh, the market can still be very headline driven as well. Um, and we did hear some commentary from Fed Speaker Kashkari moments ago that um, the Fed will need to act more aggressively if the economy turns uh, turns out to be in a high pressure, high inflation equilibrium. So um, I think we have to, you know, keep some of these market driven headlines in mind as well. Yeah, great points. We could have super bullish action going into the weekend, and then you know, worldwide events come out over the weekend, and the next thing you know bottom falls out on Monday. So I absolutely agree with you. Mel, I saw you unmuted there. Yeah, I just wanted to add <clears throat> a little bit more 
Sim gave an amazing um, overview of, you know, OPEX. It is really important. And this being, you know, really to highlight this being um, the largest expiration of options since 2019. That's three years. And, and it makes sense because we do have so much political, uh, geopolitical uh, positioning. But, but, but prior to that even coming about, um, you had a lot of hedges put in place, um, a lot of put flow put in place um, going into this Fed meeting, knowing that we, you know, domestically have our own concerns with where we were set up monetarily with a rise in interest rates. So what's really going to be telling, knowing that that all of this is coming off, even be, you know, be careful with just reviewing from the actions of today, because you, what you have is very large put positions put in place. A market maker has to hedge that. When they start closing that, the market maker doesn't have to stay hedged. So it they'll buy those shares back that they had to cover your position. Now, what's going to be very important is where the positioning comes in now that this bigger, you know, three covering that Fed event, are they going to roll those positions? And that's going to be really what I'm looking at in options flow next week, because leading up to early on this week, and Sarah's right, like a lot of this stuff already made its its bigger, you know, its bigger move. I'm hesitant to, you know, go long here um, because I want to see a lot of the positioning that we've seen in options flow has just been shorter dated. So there's not still, there's been some call flow and some nibbling, but it's been for this week for 325, 414, or covering um, positional uh, into ER. We're not seeing leap buyers come in and pick up while you've got stuff at a, uh, you know, a better valuation, there's still not that appetite to really put money to work and go very long. Um, and that's kind of what you would expect to see. So we're still only seeing more of the shorter dated positioning, which is great, you know, for trades, but just I still think there's some hesitancy. So now that we have a lot of this rolling off, as we go into next week, options flow is going to be extremely important to see, are they coming back in and rehedging, um, you know, looking to continue to make sure that they have a uh, solid put position in place to hedge, you know, a larger book, or are they going to come in and start to position, you know, and nibble more calls, which would create some more upside. So while this is still a bigger day, a bigger event, I think it's really going to be some of the actions that we see that follow. Now that you have some of that options flow pulled off the book, um, are they going to come back in and start really uh, continuing to have hedgily or did I say that hedge heavily? Yeah, that just <laughs> that comboing up that we're kind of tongue twister there. Um, so we'll, I don't think we're necessarily, you know, out of the woods. Um, I think with bear rallies, you get, you know, bigger snapback rallies. Um, so I'm just still going to be, you know, diligent. And, you know, we do have interest rate hikes coming up. There's still a lot of broken charts. Um, so just really want to remind everybody to keep that, you know, get your get your trades, make sure you're locking your profits, um, keep your stops tight, you know, on swings, because we do still have the volatility in place. Yeah, great point. Sarah, it looked like you were uh, engaged with that as well. I'd love if you have anything you want to bounce off of it with. Plus, if you would like to explain a little bit more about the outside weeks to people that aren't familiar with that. Yeah, uh, I just agree with what Mel is saying, because uh, since we have come straight off the lows, I think that there is a hesitancy. And like I was saying, it's up here. And at this point in time with this big move that we've had, it's it's just not good risk reward to be going long and outdated long. So that's why I was saying, so I think if we see an, a couple of red days next week and then you start seeing some heavy flow come in for like longer outdated stuff, that's probably when the institutions are going to want to get in because we've basically done what we always do. We took out the lows of the previous month and then reversed and that's where they want to get in. But now if they're not already in, they've got FOMO, so they can't just get in now. They got to wait. So I was just kind of reacting to what she was saying and then to uh mel is i sort like i guess you'd call her a student of the strat wouldn't you say mel okay sarah you're gonna be so proud because i killed it <laughs> with some strat stuff this morning i stayed up till one o'clock in the morning i was looking at the options flow you know we kind of we're talking about pins the other day right because we had yes. that four million share dark pool print and i'm like all right, and I just started working everything and I had some great trades today. So I really cannot say I, how much I appreciate, you know, all your 
educational resources that you throw out there because it really is just a powerful combination for me. I get to see when they're coming in with money flow. And then I'm able to technically look at the chart set up and kind of see through a different set of eyes of where I think that um, we'll be going and, and where to kind of make sure I'm setting up with targets, uh, being a lot more disciplined with that. Um, so yes, I, and I absolutely agree. And thank you because I had a great morning. <laughs> Good. Yeah. No. And I love that too. Like it makes me giddy. Like when I see something and then you come in and you're like, we see heavy activity. <laughs> like I'm like, yes. And then I think also too, it like gives people more a sense of confidence. Like we've got double confirmation, you know, we've got price action and we've got uh flow. So, and uh, let's see, Wolf, my outside bar thing. So because the market's been so strong, you know, specific tickers are basically following what the market is doing and so many names like you could have thrown a dart and hit like any outside week this week but I just posted a list of 14 tickers from my trend spider scan from my personal watch list and I was like you know these bars are most likely going to become outside weeks which basically I'm telling you what the target is. When I'm saying that, I am telling you the target is last week's high and 14 out of 14 did it. So it's just an awesome rule. It's an awesome, you know, it gives you your exact target and you're playing with time frame continuity and it's awesome. And I just love this, this uh, setup. Perfect. Okay, so let's let's get into some of what's being set up here, what trades people are in. So, Sim, what are you watching right now? Anything that is looking for triggers, any key levels that you want to share? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I'm looking at a firm right now. Uh, got a nice little pop um, off of that initial flag that we had. Uh, 40, above 40.50 is what I'm looking at for potential for calls. I'm just going to kind of wait, though, again. Uh, volume is there. It's... Um, Volume's actually been really good on a firm today. Uh, as far as SPY goes, again, still waiting for that uh, p particular pop over that 441.7-ish level. Um, underneath that, looking for a potential dip below 438.85. Um, Want to see if we see any type of continuation either to the downside or the upside uh, by breaking down below that level or breaking up below that 441.7 level. Um was looking at a couple of other tickers today. Uh, Tesla, want to see if we break that 900 level. We did earlier, but initially uh, at 901, and then we want to be able to hold above that. Um, above that, see some room to 908, and then 912 after that, 928. So I'm definitely going to be looking at that. Tesla's been holding up really strong today, but I really want to see what futures do, right? Again, like anytime it's quad witching, I just like to take a step back and kind of wait um i'll be waiting more towards the end of the day to to jump into a trade don't want to really get into uh anything as of right now just don't want to burn on burn my premium by just sitting there um until i see some clear direction i'm just going to be sitting back and and just being patient sitting on cash remember you know cash for me is always a position um and you know for any of the listeners out there as well remember that that's one thing that's helped me the most in trading is knowing that cash is a position and being comfortable with that Yep, certainly is, especially in times like this. And there's a lot of things that you can do with cash, too. Um, you know, nowadays with different staking opportunities, and there's, ba there's basically just other opportunities, right, that don't involve volatile equities. Um, but also it helps to have that cash on hand, no doubt. All right. Aaron, the Blonde Broker, thank you for joining us. I'm sure you're trading up a storm over there in Miami. Want to clue us in as to what's been going on with your morning? Yeah, just um, actually had a... A call with my NFT team for my project so I kind of you know while while they're awake during hours if they're not trading then we're working on the project um so it's working on that and then watching ApeCoin rise um that was my my biggest uh, trade of the week was claiming ape token um I don't know if anyone in here trades crypto or not, or is into NFTs, but that was great for me. And then this morning, I'm just watching the IXIC and, um, you know, just 
kind of seeing where I want to enter in any positions. And I added this morning to a few of my positions added to Moulin. I know that's been a big runner this week with the um, solid state polymer battery pack and other EVs. And then, um, yeah. I, I how'd heard... you, how'd you go about finding, finding that one? Cause that one I saw was pumping for a couple days, right? Yeah, I saw it on, um, someone alerted it on a discord and then I started doing research about the company and actually like talked about it on my podcast last week and this week. And I talked about it last week before I had even like entered the position. Just, I'm, I'm very interested to see like how it, compares to the lithium batteries that Tesla has and um, I thought it was kind of a phenomenon with electric vehicles and then uh, sure enough it like 3 x in, in three days so I, I was lucky to catch a little bit of it and then I've just been slowly adding to my position this week and I still think it has room to run got it got it yeah I mean something that I've definitely been looking at so you know I think you kind of put it on my radar but I've seen, and, you know, you can kind of fill me in on this. I know that you're pretty familiar with, I feel like, you know, anything that's under a few dollars I'm looking at is kind of in that penny stock range. I know it's not technically penny, it's dollar stock, whatever you want to call it. But a lot of them have been running. And it seems like there kind of is this point uh, for two to three months of every year where a lot of these tiny stocks, right, very small float, and they end up getting just a nice burst, a bunch of uh, hedge funds either are coming in, retail kind of catches on, um, they're decently shorted things like that and it just creates this catalyst and i've played a couple of them myself over the last month and they've gone pretty well so i was wondering if this is something on a reoccurring theme that you've been you know looking for as an opportunity especially as the rest of the equities market is still trying to either bottom out or form bases and things like that yeah i think um you know with like inflation occurring um people are looking more towards jumping into penny stocks just with the price i think it's very appealing to new traders that they can own more shares um, of this stock than they could another. And so we just see like a big dump into it, especially during the winter time. Um, you know, that's when like all the penny stocks and retail typically run. So in the summer, I will stay away from penny stocks and I'll play them in the winter and the spring. Um, but yeah, I think it's just I guess called like when CPI figures continue to rise faster than I expected, you'll see penny stocks run like yeah. fuel cell and Southwestern energy Transocean. What else did we have? Like Jivo, um, a lot of energy, energy penny stocks were doing really well. Yeah, that definitely makes sense i was looking at you know energy and a couple of other areas but yeah taking those larger sector wide trends and then bringing them down into that more concentrated area certainly does seem to have payouts awesome aaron anything else you want to add in right now as to you know what you're looking at any key levels you're watching um yeah i might see if like just i'm kind of <laughs> watching the NASDAQ right now and trying to figure out what to do with quad witching. looks like we're up about $103 today. So surprisingly, okay. Um, if I would have played SQQQ this morning, which I didn't, I would have been fucked. So I'm glad I'm kind of sitting on the back burner right now. Um, but yeah, just listening in, I guess I just need to catch up and see what everyone else was talking about. And then if I decide to trade the next hour, I'll let you know. I'll alert you. Oh, and also watching Tesla. What are you watching Tesla for? Um, I would like it to drop. <laughs> to drop. What do you want it to drop to? 700. Why is that? I just think it's an overvalued stock. I don't think it's... I, I think that the they're not gonna do do well until like they come out with like the full autonomy. How long off do you see that being? Oh, a year. A year. I have friends. You think full autonomy in a year? 
I they're already like making huge moves to it. I have friends that like work for Tesla and um, kind of just like you know they just announced that they're trying to make flying aircrafts. So I think if if they're gonna make flying aircrafts and they're gonna have like a self driving car in the near future. Okay, keep in just my watch. Eye on it. Yeah, just watch. I mean, but like I'm autonomy. I'm bearish on Tesla and I'm bullish on Mullen. We'll just say that for the week. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely looking for that full autonomy. That's something that I can't wait for. I think that's probably when I'll buy a car. So we'll see. We'll see. Keeping an eye out on it. All right. Let's bring it back around. Vegas, have you made any other moves during this? Anything else that you're watching? Plus, uh, if you want to just repeat any active positions you have for new people that joined us. Hey, Vegas. Any, yep. uh, just stuff. Uh, anyone's in Baba calls, um, just to mention, it is running. I did post it. I did mention it at 43 cents. We're currently at 102. I actually anticipate a high day break and a break over 110 on Baba. It is curling up to the upside, and there's a lot of buying pressure here in volume. So definitely make sure you guys are over 100% on those trades, on that trade. Um, and we could, you know, those were earlier. I called it on a reversal play. Uh, that was earlier. Uh, $1.91 per contract high a day. And then we called them here on spaces at 43 cents. And they're now at um, 105. So make sure to lock in, lock in over 144%. And you can have like a runner, like a free runner. Uh, but definitely lock up a chunk if you have some of some of those contracts. But I have a resistance on Baba. I did post it on social media because you guys are talking and I don't want to interrupt. Um, so, because there's some really great commentary from the wonderful woman here. Uh, so, if you are in the trade, just follow my feed because I'm giving you updates on the trade. So, I don't want um, to interrupt any of the ladies here. But it is running and uh, 110 uh, 10 is the next resistance on BABA. Awesome. Yeah. Why, why do you? So, again, we're seeing a lot of these Chinese names running. Do you think there's multiple factors involved? Um, well, with today, we know obviously the quad witching and, and things like that. Uh, but I will say, I think there was also a comment, like I've been following FXI all week. I mean, FXI, the China large cap, I mean, that's been super strong and that's kind of helped me gauge uh, trading a stock like BABA. But also yesterday morning, pre-market, we had a huge dark pool print, uh, over $151 million going into BABA. So the trade didn't have the action that I was looking for because it, you know, it, I kind of felt like it was being held down. Uh, but obviously the confirmation showed up this morning when it broke that 103.50. But there was also comments, I think, earlier too that um, I think there was uh, uh, Biden, President Biden was talking with President Xi and they were saying that, you know, uh, China needs to, you know, China and the U.S. need to be supportive for peace around the world. And I thought that I noticed that after he, they had mentioned that statement, I had noticed that some of the China stocks were also um, popping to higher highs. Uh, and some good examples were obviously uh, NIO has been really strong today. I've talked about NIO many times that any time, in my opinion, that it's below $20, it's a really strong buy. Um, I, that is my long-term holdings. One of my biggest positions is NIO. I've built this position. I'm still building on any time it goes below 20 and definitely looking to add on the way up when it goes over 25 um, But, uh, you know, so was noticing a lot of action in China plays today, too, as a result of maybe that statement. I mean, Lee Auto has been on fire. FXI, like Baba's ripping right now. So um, really a lot of strength in the China market today in particular. And I don't know if it has a reflection from those comments as well. Uh, but definitely um, I found, I noticed um, that the stock's, and Ch the China plays were popping uh, even harder after those comments, after they'd had some pullbacks from the morning. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And yeah, the quad witching and other things factoring in for sure, but like a 40% week for BABA, that is out of the ordinary to see it move like that with that large, you know, market cap. I mean, we're just seeing things balancing here. Uh, Sarah, I'm curious, you know, with any of these Chinese names that have been running, have you been touching any of them? Uh, I have not, no. Is there a point where you would start to look at them again? Uh, let's 
I would need a another weekly setup to form. It's interesting where exactly we bounced and I can like strat this up. Uh all right. Oh my god, I love it. Strat that up. Yeah, so on the if you're looking at the monthly chart, because I use multiple time frames, so I'm always looking at the monthly, the weekly, the daily, and sometimes larger time frames. But if you look at the monthly and you go back to uh, June 1st, 2016, we had a monthly pivot low of 73.30. And this past week, we took it out by two cents. So we hit a low of 73.28. So this is when we say like we have we have hit one of our targets, and it's also important that it was a monthly pivot low because that's an important target because that's where people will put their stops. Obviously, if they're swinging, they'll put them under important monthly pivot lows. So we took it out by two cents, and then on that day, what day was that? 3.15, we had a green daily candle. So if somebody was really hunting Baba, I wasn't. I kind of lost interest in it. But if somebody was really hunting it, they could have bought when we broke that level by two cents, a small position. I mean, I could have never anticipated the gap up the next day. But there was also another entry. If you did miss that big gap up day, we had an inside day break uh, yesterday. So if you wanted to play it today, you would have gone long above yesterday's high with your target of Wednesday's high. But it's just interesting to see where it exactly it stopped. It exactly stopped on that monthly pivot after we took it out, actually. So, And yeah. what else? There's, I don't, I don't see a monthly outside bar happening for Baba. It's just too much more to go. Let's see. Yeah, we'd have to be up at 115 to even activate the outside bar rule. But it's already moved so much that I would not consider this a candidate for an outside bar. And we only have like a third of the month left also. So that's also a factor. So like next week, if you got, you know, continuation, you, you might take it. But still just kind of like along the lines with I said with everything else, I want to see some daily corrective activity, some pullbacks, because like I said, still everything's off the lows and consecutive daily uh, higher lows. So you want some pullback. Okay. Uh, how, I, I guess with this pullback here that we want, I mean, we just had this big move, obviously, this week, but we've seen months of selling. So, well, I mean, if you're looking really far out, I'm sure you could go ahead and get in if you wanted. But as far as like, like I don't, I don't, long-term trade so uh, my my trades are day trades so i wouldn't even be looking to right. day trade this till we break a previous day's low okay yeah that makes sense to me yeah definitely when you're looking on that that um shorter time frame for sure you want to see that small pullback when you have a 40 percent week right yes okay that makes sense awesome all right mel a question for you uh, what's the flow looking like today? Where are we seeing bullish and bearish? Or I guess kind of capping off this week. You know, I'm not even, this is going to sound really odd, but on days like this, I really, it's because remember, existing positions are closing out and there's repositioning. So there's so much bid side activity. A lot of stuff still shorter dated. Like I said, I have been in managing my position so um notice a little tqqq put activity out to april 14th um otherwise a lot of stuff that's coming in is just some of that momentum flow and i would tell everybody to be just a little bit cautious because you got a lot of positions closing out um so if you're not seeing where they're coming in and then flipping that uh just be a little cautious i just i did want to kind of add to um the comments you know with with china names before that news the day that news was announced in china before we had the gap up um we saw 
insane size in the um, dark pool activity into the uh, China ETFs. So we had Asher, and you can see it clear as day on your chart because it's the largest volume. I, I don't, I didn't even go all the way back, but ASHR being one of the China ETFs with 12 million dark pool shares. That same day, they hit KWeb for almost four or five million. They hit FXI with several million, and then the I. EMG, um, all those being ETFs that hold uh, those baskets of stocks or have larger weighting. So I do think that there's some money rotation there. I'm just, uh, it, 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 if you were not in that BABA trade, that IV has gotten so jacked. It's just not my preference. How I'm personally trading it is I picked up some commons in YINN. That's going to be your three times. There's the yin and yang for China ETFs leveraged. So Yang is the three times bear, Yin is the three times bull. I think I'll be able to manage, um, have a little bit of exposure, but not necessarily sticking with just one stock and more of the basket. So um, look to long hold those. I, I think we'll see some, but I don't want the volatility or the increased IV. I'll day trade those all day long as we see some you know, momentum come in, but not personally looking to just hold one individual name. And that way I could just manage a little bit better with commons. Okay. Yeah, that definitely makes sense to me. All right. I think we might do some questions soon. Um, I see a couple of people, you know, have been requesting throughout this and I think we might bring some up, but we'll probably start those in about five minutes. So if you do have questions, just feel free to request, um, hop in that queue and then we'll bring some people up. Uh, if you want to talk about specific stocks, opportunities, anything like that, that is all good here. Okay. Let's bring it back. So Sim, have you been touching um, SPX today? Yeah, just uh, particularly in the morning, um, I, I was in some calls, um, scalped them, got out of the position, um, not holding anything right now. I'm really looking at this uh, firm. Uh, we went ahead and it broke my level over that 40.5, which is what I was looking at, and we saw a little pullback. I want to see if we get a nice little bull flag here setting up on the five minute. If we do, um, could potentially take that for a scalp. Uh, to the upside. And um, looking at that also, I see the March 25th, 2022, uh, the $45 calls, which is next week's expiration. Those are the only calls that I see that have decent volume, though. Um, I was looking at the 42s. They don't really have much volume. I usually, when I scalp especially, I'm looking for a volume above 1,000. Uh, if I don't get that, I just stay away from the place. So I want to see here if we get a uh, increase in volume or what happens, but um, again, just kind of sitting back and just observing for now. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, we're going to get some better direction um, here in maybe the next couple of hours. Uh, but I also do know that Biden is talking. I think well, the China and the U.S. are talking today. So I, I haven't seen any particular updates. Um, I saw a couple of updates about uh, China telling Biden uh, that NATO should hold talks with Russia to resolve factors behind the Ukraine crisis. So seeing that news come out, I want to see if we particularly see any bad headline and potentially dump out this Friday. But again, just like Vegas was saying, um, that repositioning, uh, I'm really kind of focused on that last hour due to uh, OPEX, due to quad witching. Okay. Yeah, that definitely makes sense to me. All right. I think I'm going to go ahead and bring up, unless there's anything else you wanted to add on to that, I'm just going to bring up a couple of speakers. No, go for it. I would love to take questions. Cool. MS Trades, do you have a question for us? Yeah, I was looking at Redbox. It's got a lot of volume, uh, bottom chart. Um, one of the SPACs that got really hammered. Uh, the company is not profitable, has a lot of revenue as well. Could be a similar type of place uh, like Mullen last few days. Uh, just wanted to know what your thoughts are on that one. RDBX. Anybody want to touch on that? Sam or Vegas? Um, this is really not a ticker that I particularly trade, um, but I, I see the volume increase here on the day. It looks like it's up about 37% on the day as well. Um, were you looking at this on like a fundamental basis? No, just um, as a trade, I got in earlier at around 210. Uh, so nice. I'm, uh, I've got a decent profit on the day, uh, but it looks like if it consolidates above 2.5, it could really... Uh, go close to three. 
Yeah, you're sitting in a little bit of a flag right now, but if you see, um, if the flag breaks to the downside, there is a bounce level that I see at about that 2.3 area. Um, <clears throat> so you may see a bounce from there and then see some more upside. Um, but as of now, it looks like we're breaking that flag to the downside. So uh, something to be, you know, cognizant about. It's ran a lot today, right? I mean, running, you know, above 30% on the day is phenomenal. So, um, but again, you know, focus on what's what's happening today. Um, quad witching is is very, uh, again, it, there's just a lot of volatility that comes with it. Um, and that volatility is really everywhere. So uh, just be cognizant of that. But like I said, that. 2.3 level, um, I see a potential bounce there. If we break underneath that, I uh, do have room down to about that 210 area again, which is uh, your entry. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, right on. Yeah, that's that's what I'm looking at right now. But just like you said, above that 2.5 area, you could see some potential upside um, to break that 264 area and then uh, see some some higher um, uh, some some movement to the to the upside after that. But uh, again, looking at it right now, just breaking to the downside. Um, still good volume, but that 2.3 area is going to be crucial. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for coming up and asking. All right, Aaron, you have something there? Oh, I was just I was checking out the ticker as well. I think it's crazy that um, stock used to be $27. And now it's trading in the twos. Oh, yeah, that's why it looks very similar to Malin because that was another SPAC that got really hammered down to a dollar. Yeah, I saw, so analysts were predicting like, I don't know, anywhere from like not it running back up to like 9 to $14. But then again, like I never trust, you know, what the analysts are saying. So I think you're, I think you're playing it right by day trading the stock. Um but yeah, Sim was spot on. So we'll just see where it breaks out to. Perfect. All right. And it looks like it's it looks oh, like it's coming down right now. Sorry, I'm just watching it. Yeah. Yeah, kind of bear flag in there. All right. O T N O F X. Do you have a question? They were requesting for a while, so sometimes people kind of get kicked or AFK. There we go. Uh Hello, I wanted I wanted to inquire about uh, how to invest in these American stocks because currently where I'm, I'm at, I'm I'm I'm, well, I'm familiar with forex but not uh, stocks. So like, if there are some universal websites, because I realize quite a number of them are limited to some African countries. So if there is one that you can do for general. Not, not an expert, but I know that there is a lot of regulation around this. So majority of U.S. brokerages are not able to let people that are in other countries trade on them. Uh, they would basically just run into a lot of regulation problems. Uh, you could try a VPN. I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, but there isn't, there isn't, to the best of my knowledge, just a universal, um, you know, brokerage, uh, at least with the stock market, you know, more crypto markets and things like that. There's more opportunity around those, but I don't think so for the stock market. Mel, do you have any insight on that? I do not. No. I okay. Not. Yeah, I, I just I just know that most of them don't allow it outside. Um, having worked a little bit with some brokerages like Alpaca and some others, in essence, to me, it's just a U.S. regulatory crackdown on them. Uh, maybe it's something to do with like GDPR compliance. I, I don't know. There's, there's other stuff that kind of goes on outside, but nah, not off the top of my head. I don't think that there's – for people that are outside of U.S. and Canada, it's pretty difficult to uh, trade uh, U.S. stocks. Uh, although I've seen people in London and areas like that have success with it, but uh, I think you mentioned from Africa, and I'm not sure with Africa. Um, okay, I thank you. I tried with the VPN, but then again, uh, when it came to withdrawal, it was a lot of trouble, so I decided to let go. Yeah, my, my worry with the VPN is going to be, you know, it works for a little, but then stops and you kind of have put money in and you could potentially lose access to that money or other problems. So I just, for that reason, I personally wouldn't, you know, want to risk it in those cases. I think um, you should check out the interactive brokers site. I think that's the top used for um international trading and then um if you can't get that 
trade station is another one that I would check out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Aaron, I agree with you. I think interactive brokers can definitely work in a lot of areas. I just think um, even when you can get it to work in certain areas, you still a lot of times aren't able to invest in U.S. stocks. Uh, oh. Is is kind of part partially what I've seen, but she's right. Uh, I know that we have mutual friends in Canada that use them, so perhaps it works elsewhere. Okay, thank you. I'll check it out. No problem. All right. Anybody else that has questions, feel free to go ahead and request to come on up, and we'll uh, we'll take them up here. And if you have on specific stocks, on quad witching, on anything else like that. Uh, happy to have that. And if not, we're just going to continue. Uh, looks like this market's still moving higher. Um, so I know the people that are trading today, Vegas, uh, you know, any of your positions, are you taking any more profit? there i see another question oh sorry i'm here uh wolf were you asked were you speaking to me or yeah no? i just saw yeah i just saw this market's moving higher here i was just wondering if you took any more profit on anything uh i i did put a lot another lotto on 115s because maybe some people missed the one tenth and and uh those are doing extremely well the 115 babas are uh i put them on my social media because uh it's just easier for people to follow along uh but uh the one tens uh, the 115s are on there at 17 cents. They're on the move right now. They're going right now at 27. I think that size so strong. Baba is going to break uh, that level here that I was looking for, which is that 110.10. And if that breaks, uh, I could see this going potential towards 114.60 today. And the buying pressure is like really strong here. Um, I don't really see any seller exhaustion at all. The tape is lit up and I'm watching that tape and I am seeing the sizes coming through and they are relentlessly loading and buying and buying and buying. I don't really care if they dump it yeah. next week, uh, but just in terms of today, uh, they're, they're hammering this like no tomorrow and that's what's going to move the stock is the money flow. That's it. That's all. And the money flow is heavy and Baba and I'm watching them on the real time tape is what I'm talking about. And you can watch it. Uh, those of you with time and sales, you can see the sizes coming through are beautiful, beautiful um, sizes. I'm seeing like thousand shares, 2000 shares consistently coming in with size. So this is not the obviously retail traders doing all this. Um, so the action is just incredible. So Still holding that uh, spy. I uh, actually had a really interesting level on spy for today. For my, what I'm seeing, um, I anticipate uh, for today uh, for the spy because it is holding over four thirty seven fifty quite well. Um, it's at the four forty forty one. I'm looking for this to go to four forty one seventy nine, four forty two fifty one, and four forty three twenty four. 44370 and I have a max target potential. I always say potential because it's, you know, may not hit everything. Um, I'm looking for a max potential of 44489 today on SPY. Okay. All right. Looks like we got more questions. Praneef, what's up? What, hey, sorry, hello. Mel. How are you? Oh, sorry, Mel. One just one, you go, just one sec. Yeah. Um, keep an eye on Disney here. We just had some sweeper activity coming in, starting above the ask into the 414, 150s, current spot, 140, 21. Uh, you've got over 600,000 that just came in. They started hitting at 92 cents, paying up to 96.80. So a little bit out of the money, but what's interesting is it's not even ER flow. They're coming into the 414, 150s, and they're set to report May. So could see a little um, upside bounce and momentum come into DIS. Thank you. Yeah, of course. All right, Prenny, what's up? Hey, hello, how are you? Um so um I so I go through the blonde the blonde broker's broadcast and I really like it. And I want her to know her take on Lucid Motors. You know, I'm trying to invest in that. So Aaron, <laughs> your thoughts on Lucid Motors? Ah, um, I have I have many thoughts on Lucid. Um, 
you know, so they, they missed production this last quarter, which caused the stock price to drastically drop, which I guess is good if you were able to um, pick up on puts. And I know a lot of people profited on that. I am staying away from the stock for now just because I invested um, before the merger when it was CCIV. So I've made my money off of the stock. But I don't know. Have you entered into the position? Are you are you wanting to buy the stock or have you had it and you're looking to like sell or see if you're bag holding? What's your what's your position? I'm looking I'm looking to go to uh, either Lucid or Rivian. Yeah, I mean I'm I don't have like a Lucid or Rivian. I really, I really don't think you're you're making a bad play if you're investing in the future and you are looking at these electric vehicles. Um, I would personally, I've already played Lucid. I would invest in Rivian, um, but also it's not financial advice. Um, let me. So Lucid's already up three percent for the day. So I would wait if you were thinking about entering and it's it's up 12 percent in the last week despite its past missed earnings and i know it's down like four percent from the past month i would watch it today um before you enter in anything and see if like after biden speaks if we have like a you know a, a midday dip or um if this is a play that you want to enter in on monday but i wouldn't buy right now all right thank you uh, love your podcast by the way Thank you so much. I'm uh I'm looking to have all of these lovely ladies come on it soon. Um, cause they they day trade and are actively live trading, and I think it's very insightful to listen to them. And that's why we're doing these spaces. And you know, I'm looking forward to being able to um, present it also on another platform for you guys. Very cool. Thank you for coming up, Renee. All right. Hey. Yep. Thank I you. See I see another person, VJoy, requesting. Unfortunately, I'm actually having a lot of trouble bringing them up, so not sure what's going on there. But if they want to leave the space and re-request, I'll try to get them back up. Uh, Mel and Sarah, I know that you both have 12.30 p.m. EST cutoff, so I want to kind of give you each a few minutes here just to say anything else that you're looking at, um, any thoughts for retail, uh, you know, kind of throughout this week, um, anything along those lines. So, Mel, would you like to go first? Um, sure. Like I said, I'm taking it easy for the rest of the day. There's going to be a lot of volatility. I'm really looking forward to what kind of options flow we start seeing come in next week. Like I said, there's a lot coming off the book today. And so you're seeing a lot of these bigger moves. I'd be a little cautious um, going in. Maybe if you're looking at a position, maybe just start with um, not your full size. Uh, to have exposure, but not necessarily um, going full size. We still have to know, are they going to start coming in now that they're taking so much off the book? And are they going to start putting some hedges back in place? Or are they going to start preparing and setting up some longer positions to cover ERs? Um, I'm, I'm, I've had a great week. I'm going to enjoy a nice weekend and come back with a uh, fresh look at the markets um, on Monday. It's hard to buy when you've had this kind of run. I'd rather see a little pullback and see what names they want to continue to come after. That's just kind of how I'm looking to personally approach the markets. Um, but I think the options flow that we see next week is going to be really important uh, to see where they're actually looking to position. If we have um, just directionally which way they're looking to take it. We've had some great movers this week off of options flow where they're coming in shorter dated. I mean, even a firm on Tuesday night, that was one of my call outs on the, um, they were coming into those 2850 calls for this week and they had some size there. And I mean, damn, what a move. Um, so definitely keep your eyes on the options flow. Um, actually, Black Box is doing a spring sale for five dollars on your first month so if you're new to flow or money flow um you're able to jump in and kind of get some exposure i'm on voice all through the day talking through what we're seeing so you get a little more insight there um I have a link in my bio if anybody's interested in that but otherwise appreciate the time and i hope everybody has a great rest of your friday thank you so much and yeah definitely that flow will be super important and we'll be sure to get you on some spaces early in the week to make sure that we dive into it see what direction the market's going if anybody hasn't already followed mel make sure that you're doing so now it is going to be massively to your advantage while trading or investing in this market all right thank you so much mel okay thank you, Dad. 
Mm-hmm. Sarah, I know you have that 1230 cutoff as well. Any other thoughts, advice for retail, um, ideas going into the weekend? Uh, not really. I'm going to be doing a market outlook video this weekend where I'll kind of cover my thoughts and stuff like that. But uh, just don't be in a hurry to jump into anything in, at the beginning of next week. Uh, let the charts dictate where we're going. I've said this a couple times now, but kind of what I'm looking for is daily pullbacks. So once we see those and they see that, you know, the retracement isn't so large, we get maybe some nice, not supposed to say this word in strat terms, but daily bull flags, then you might have a good entry to get in long if you missed this four-day rally. So be patient, let the chart do what it's going to do, get in, set your stops risk reward all that but again don't don't be in a hurry to to just jump in next week because you feel like you missed this huge move this week yep yep great points there and Mm -hmm. any other names that you'll be uh, eyeing into the weekend and kind of just watching and doing any charting on nope not right now i'm gonna let the market close see where it closes and then that's when i will go through all my tickers and my sectors Okay. Well, perfect, sir. It's really, really nice having you on here on these Friday spaces and really glad we were able to get you on for the hour. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Okay. So big shout out to, yep. Big shout out to Mel and Sarah. If you're not already following them, make sure that you click into their bios. Uh, Real leaders in this, you know, FinTwit world and consistent, you know, consistently putting out top tier content, transparent content. So I recommend clicking in and following them now. All right. Uh, One thing I want to just state before we go on to a couple more questions that we have from the audience is a bunch of the speakers. Oh, Mel, did you unmute there? Okay. Uh, I couldn't tell. Uh, A bunch of these speakers, you know, are participating with me in something called Market Madness. So if anybody's in March Madness, which started yesterday, your bracket's already probably busted. In fact, there's less than 1% of those brackets that are left. However, there's going to be another opportunity to fill out a bracket this upcoming week and definitely one that is for people who are into trading and finance. So together with 60 other different accounts on FinTwit, I am creating Market Madness, which is March Madness, but for stocks, ETFs, cryptos, and NFTs. We are launching the bracket fill out on Monday at 12, but we have a wait list right now that's open until then. If you just sign up for the wait list, fill out a bracket, you're automatically entered into a raffle for $1,000. You have pretty decent odds right now, and I pinned the link up top. If you don't want to click into the tweet up top, it's just marketmadness.co. If you go there and drop in an email, you're automatically entered into a raffle for $1,000. Um, I, I don't care if you don't want to put, like, your work or personal. You want to put, you know, your one that you use for sign-up contests or whatever. I just recommend going ahead and doing it. You have pretty good odds to win, and, hey, that's $1,000 right there. That can go a long way. With that being said, we have a couple more questions. So, Sammy... I saw you requested. Did you have a question? Yeah. Hey guys. Hope you guys are doing good. Um, I just my question. My question is related to um, uh, unusual whale. Does anyone uh, use their um, like a fee uh, service, like their uh, where they're pricing like thirty two dollars a month? Is it worth it? I just want to know if someone has already used it. Uh, like uh, I work already in the finance uh, industry. I already have like a lot of uh, the uh, programs for free since I work in it. But I wanted to see, you know. Uh, something more and I've noticed that you know Unusual Whale they're doing pretty good uh, been following them for a couple of months now I wanted to know if anyone has used their pay service is it is it nice is it worth it uh, what do you guys think that's about it Sim Vegas Aaron